Hey y'all, what's going on? It's your girl Shy Gemini and I am back. Yes, I am back for a new review of Braxton Family Values Season 6 Episode 3. So thought I would come in here and talk about the episode, then get a chance to review last week because I again I was out of town in DC. So this episode starts off where it left off from the last episode, and it's with them meeting with Michael Jr. and Michael Sr., Daddy Braxton. So they're talking about, again, the whole Tamar and Vince situation. And, you know, uh, Daddy Braxton, uh, again, is explaining, you know, when he talked to Tamar and Vince about the situation, they were saying that nothing was going on that she didn't have any marks or anything on her. So Trina's whole idea is if she's going to protect him, then she's going to wash her hands of the whole situation. So, and I kind of don't blame her. You know, if she wants to get help, then she'll get help. But if she wants to protect him and not tarnish his name or whatever, then she, I guess she's okay. She feels like she's okay. There's nothing wrong. So. Why am I going to worry myself about your situation? You're not worried about it. And I think another thing that was frustrating Trina was the fact that Daddy Braxton, you know, was kind of not accepting it. And he was just like, well, I don't know. Like, he didn't believe it. I don't know what it is. He just felt like, well, since he didn't physically see it or whatever, and she's saying that it's okay, it's okay. And then Tracy made this statement about, you know, daddy is a Christian and he has this turn the other cheek mentality. But I'm like, usually with dads, though, that mentality goes out the window because no father wants their child to be um, abused by a, a man. So I'm not understanding that logic, but he thanked them for letting them know and. He's saying, you know, regardless, you guys are sisters and you all can be mad at each other one time and, and then loving each other the next. So we'll see how it goes. Um, towards the end of that conversation, Daddy Braxton says he has a surprise for the girls. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what could he possibly be up to? And I know I'm like, I was thinking the same thing that Trina said. I hope he ain't talking about bringing his mom, his wife to the party because then that would just mess up the situation <laughs> so tracy and trina go to the weed store like a cannabis store or whatever in vegas because it's legal there and they said they needed to <laughs> relax their mind so they didn't get any edibles or anything but they got some weed bombs and i'm like they actually have weed bombs <laughs> i didn't know that like they have everything as far as marijuana and cannabis and stuff so you don't have to necessarily smoke it you can bathe in it i'm like hmm i should take a trip out to vegas <laughs> but anyway so they're getting their weed bombs to relax and they asked the guy you know does this give you a yeast infection and he was like no there's no yeast products in there and you know tracy with her crazy talk and crazy antics talking about you know you can't be having no yeast going up in the the purse we call it the purse <laughs> so <laughs> they go on from there so we get to Tony's 50th birthday party and when I saw the setup I now understand why Tawanda was like they shouldn't have put y'all in charge and she was absolutely right <laughs> that party looked terrible that the pictures like it was so cheesy and cheap looking and y'all know how grand and diva like Tony is and she's not grand and diva like in a real bad way like a Mariah Carey way but she is Tony Braxton the living legend and y'all cheese her out like that like seriously you couldn't do anything more grand like she didn't have any other friends anybody that could come they had the pictures lined up. It looked like a school presentation. Like they were getting ready to present a presentation to the class. It just looked so terrible. And let me tell you about those looks that they thought. Those Tony Braxton looks. Tracy actually looked like herself. Because her wigs to me always look tired anyway. So <laughs> that wig was tired. It looked like something she normally wears. And I, when I saw Trina... 
I didn't know what look she was going for. I'm like, is this the seven whole days or breathe again? Like, what is she going for? <laughs> and what's, what makes it worse, Tony didn't even realize that they were paying homage to her. They didn't even know they, that she was dressed like them. When she shaded, Trina was like, is that how I dress? And I'm like, this was a fail. You bombed, fail. You take a, you get a big L, Trina. <laughs> this was horrible. Tawana was absolutely right. And Tony mentioned, she's like, this is not really a fun party. And I'm like, it was, it was all dry. But anyway, then you get Daddy Braxton. He's like, I got a surprise for you. And I was like, oh Lord. And Miss E was looking like, I'm not with the shit. Don't, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. I mean, that look on her face was like, if this woman come out of there in this room, it's gonna be some shit. <laughs> But this fool comes in as their grandmother, which is Daddy Braxton's mother, Mother Eva. And I'm like, really? What the hell are you doing, Daddy Braxton? He looked ridiculous. He sounded ridiculous. And Tony was not feeling it whatsoever. You could see it all in her face. She was not feeling that. Like, she wasn't feeling the whole night. So, they really... They, they bombed. Yes, you bombed Trina and Tracy. This was a terrible party. And I hope Tony never lets you all plan a party ever again. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> and let me, it's something else that I wanted to bring up about Evelyn. Every time Daddy Braxton comes in, it's like she further, like, to still show that bitterness that she shows, it's like, it looks bad. It's starting to look bad. Like, we're understanding and sympathetic of what happened as far as Daddy Braxton and Evelyn and what he did. Yes, he was laying it low and spreading it wide. I get it. But, girl, your stankness and stuff, when he comes in the room, it's like, okay, it's enough, Mama E. Like, Seriously, that's their father. You chose him. You know he's got to be in the picture. So, what? Why? Con why have the constant stank attitude when you see him? But that's a whole nother story. So then, later on, Tawanda's in the park and she calls Tracy and Trina to ask them about the party, and she asked about Tamar, and of course. They let her know that Tamar didn't come. So, you know, she was disappointed to hear that. And Tamar just MIA. She won't talk to anybody. She won't call anybody. She won't return anybody's phone calls. So, it's nothing they can really do about that. So, they asked uh, Tawana how's the play going. And she said that it was going good. And, you know, everything was going smoothly or whatever. So, then... Um, Tawana kind of slips it in there that she has a date. But, of course, with her being the secret squirrel, she doesn't tell them any more details about what the who the date is with or where they're going or anything. So, she pretty much leaves them in limbo. And they're like, you know, tell us who this person is. Who's this mystery person? And she wouldn't say anything. So, that ends. We hop over back to Vegas where the family is for the Soul Train Awards. So they show the red carpet and they show Tamar on the red carpet doing her thing and then she walks off. Then Tony comes on the red carpet with her sons, you know, and she looked good. Her sons, they're growing up, they're really handsome kids. And then the family, they get out the limo and they walk the red carpet. Tracy. Tracy did not look like she was going to an award show. She looked like she was getting off the, the truck to go to the club. I'm like, what does she have on? <laughs> Tracy, that was, it, it, that outfit was horrible. I mean, she really looked like she was just going to the club. It was bad. It was all bad. The wigs, Mama Evelyn, why don't y'all go and buy her some new wigs? Those wigs are terrible. They look dry. It looked like that uh, Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me wig. <laughs> it's bad. She's a beautiful woman. I'm not trying to disrespect her, but 
that those wigs when she had that confessional it just looked so dry and frizzled but anyway so while they're on the red carpet they asked miss e about her comments they say i'm not gonna ask you what you said but you know do you have anything further and she was like i mean no there's nothing else to say and you know i'm just putting it out there or something like that and i'm like miss e miss e miss e bad move bad move so we go inside the awards and they show tamar singing and i i can't deny it i don't i'm not a big fan of tamar she gets under my skin sometimes but you can never say that Tamar can't sing. Like, she definitely sings down, okay? Sings down. So, she sounded good. She actually looked good. I love her in those black wigs. And I would, well, she's bald now, but I would hope that she, if she decides to go back to wearing wigs again, they will be the black wigs. Not that blonde and not that orange. Ugh, the orange was horrible. So, after she performs, Tony goes on stage and receives her Living Legend Award, and rightfully so, it's deserved because Tony Braxton is a le living legend. She's, you know, she has many hits, many cuts. I remember listening to my mom listen to Tony Braxton in the house from cleaning up on Saturdays, and just like, man, her voice is just everything. So she definitely deserved it. And so she said while she was performing, she saw Tamar and she wanted to make a smile. So she went down there and had her sing with her. And it was a cute moment. It was a really cute moment. But you could see in the distance, Miss Evelyn's face, she looked sad. And, you know, it, it, it seemed like they weren't talking to each other. So after the uh, award ceremony, we go back to Tracy in Baltimore and she has Daddy Braxton come over and she lets him know that Kevin's having a baby and he said he told me he wasn't even doing it. So <laughs> they're talking about that and he said he's not babysitting and um, he'll probably keep the baby. You know, this is the great grandbaby, but he'll probably spend some time with it. But he said having Logan was enough so he doesn't want to be babysitting he's done his time but um he asked again if she talked to tamar and she said haven't talked to her since they were in vegas so tamar i can tell you know this entire season tamar is not going to cooperate and it's just so strange that after she pulled some of the stunts that she pulled with her sisters as far as their divorce and having so much to say and being so opinionated now mom's the word with her so I don't get it but well I get it because that's how Tamar is so head back to Atlanta we have Tawanda and Trina meeting up and they're talking she tries to get her to t tell her about her date and again, Tawanda won't say anything. And then Tawanda also mentions that Trina is dating somebody. And then Trina didn't say anything. And she was like, I can't stand you because I don't think Trina wanted to go there. <laughs> she did not want to go there. But anyway, um, Tawanda asked what was happening again in Vegas. We're all back in Vegas again about what happened with Tamar. And Trina lets Tawanda know that... Tamar did not talk to them, didn't speak to them at the war ceremony, didn't talk to them while they were in Vegas. And I'm like, wow. Like, Tamar, you are ridiculous. You are seriously ridiculous. Why would you ignore your family? What do you, what did they do? I mean, I understand you being upset with Mama E because she shouldn't have done that. I don't care how desperate she was, and I get that she's desperate, but she shouldn't have did that. That wasn't her place. But why are you mad at the family? I don't understand. You had so much to say about everybody's marriage. You talked about them. You had your opinions. And now you disappear. And I'm not knocking her for one to be alone. Because I've been where I've been down. And I don't want to be bothered. But I don't ignore my family. Like if I'm out somewhere, I'm not going to ignore my family. And I talk to them like... Where they do that at? I don't do that. So, 
Tamar, I don't understand why you refuse to talk to them. She didn't talk to she didn't even talk to her mom. But then later Evelyn said that she, you know, spoke, kissed her and then kept going, but she wouldn't talk to her. So I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. And I don't think you should do your family like that because it's not their fault, you know, that you're going through with your husband. And again, you put your own mess out there. You did that. So Again, I don't know why you're mad at them. So again, we're back in Baltimore and Tracy and her husband and Kevin are talking about the baby and asking if he's ready and um, what his plan is. And he said he wants to go to school and work and take care of the baby. And Tracy is like, um, where are you staying? Because you and your girlfriend are not going to stay here if you can have a baby then you can live on your own so he talking about he living in a condo and i'm like you got condo money <laughs> so i guess tracy and kevin gonna be paying for that but um i guess he gotta get out she said she gonna put them through a baby boot camp to teach them how to change diapers and all that stuff because they ain't never did that he's still a kid so but uh that's that so during that meeting with Tawanda, Trina said she was going to have a meeting with Evelyn to see how she felt and where her head was. So they sat down at this restaurant and they talked about the Soul Train weekend and, and Tony's uh, birthday celebration. And she talked about how she was glad that Tony went down and sang with her sister and, you know, that. Um... They, again, talk about they haven't talked to Tamar. Tamar's just shutting herself off from everybody. And, of course, Miss Evelyn is, not only are her feelings hurt, but she's concerned. She's worried about her child and what she's going through and the fact that she could possibly be going through these things alone. So, um, she asked her, you know, where you gonna go? Where, where you gonna try to see her before she goes on her tour? Because at this time she was going on tour for, I guess, her album that had just came out, and she said she would try, but you know, she can't be worrying about. She's like, even though I'm worried about my child, I can't be worrying like that because it's gonna kill me. And you know, she only said something out of desperation. She was like, you know, I don't put you all's business out there. So the only reason why I did is because I was desperate. So she started crying and I felt really bad for her. And I hope that if Tamar watched this episode, she understands where her mother was coming from. And although it might have been wrong and you may not agree with it, she was coming from a loving place, not a malicious place to hurt you or anything, but she just wants you to get help. So again, this season, I just find it so weird that Tamar, she's not in, she's not doing any confessionals. She's not communicating with anybody. Like she's really getting to escape dealing with this situation when the other girls didn't. They had to talk about it. They had to incorporate it into their storyline. So I'm interested to see how the rest of this season is going to go, if she's going to finally open up. I doubt it because, she, again, she wants to protect Vincent and honestly I think they're gonna end up back together I really believe that so we'll see how it goes again this is my review for uh, Braxton Family Values season 6 episode 3 so I hope you all have a good night and I shall be back to talk to you guys about Hustling Souls alright mm -hmm.